So here we are about to do the uh, kinesiological muscle tests and as we explained earlier the difference between the Kendall and Kendall strength tests and Dr Goodhart's research on kinesiological muscle testing is to test the postural and neural activity of the muscles. So to do that we approximate the origin and insertion of the muscle and then just test to see if it can posturally hold. So it's quite a light test, quite a subtle test um, and that's, that's the art of or the skill of muscle testing. So here we have the, the bicep muscle and so we approximate the origin and insertion and then just ask the person to hold and just test the muscle. And the opposite of that, which is out of shot at the moment, what we'll show you is, is the uh, triceps, the antagonist of the biceps, and we push in the opposite direction in that way. Here we have the ratio radialis coming off the humerus and coming down to the wrist. And so we bend the arm just slightly into this position and press down lightly like that. Opening the hand up, we have the opponent's police eye, which is allows us to have precision grip, which is very different to a monkey's grip, which is its power grip, hasn't got a precision grip, and that gave us much more dexterity to make tools and uh, evolve these. So we hold the little finger and thumb together in opposition, and we pull apart like so. This muscle here is called the pectoralis minor, and attaches to rib three, four, and five, and comes off a projection of the scapula called the coracoid process. This is very important for maintaining the upper pleural dome and its antagonist is a muscle called the trapezius which is on the back of the body and when that's weak these will become tight. These muscles also tighten with people driving all day in this position or using a mouse or any other activities and lots of times we get ips ipsilateral or one-sided tightness with one-sided sports such as squash, uh, golf, tennis players, things like that would get uh, tensions in these muscles here. And there's actually part of the brachial plexus passes under this muscle so it can actually trap nerves and give radiation pains down at the elbows and hands. So again, it's a very important muscle to keep uh, intact. So we just simply bring the, the shoulder forward to approximate again the origin insertion and we press down lightly on the shoulder to test the muscle. This muscle along here it's called the subclavius, sub meaning it's under, under the clavicle, subclavius. And it's very important in the final stages of arm abduction. When we've gone to 90 degrees, the humerus has done its work on the scapula, and the rest is scapulohumeral rhythm. And as we raise up above there, the subclavius is very important in pulling the crankshape uh, clavicle bone out of the way of the, the ascending humerus to give us the last 35 degrees of abduction. It's a muscle that can't be uh, muscle tested, so what we have to do is we therapy localise it and we use another previously intact muscle and test it in that way. We'll come to that as it's part of like a surrogate test that we'll cover later. He's a very Im important muscle, part of the postural set and this one's called the sternocleidomastoid and it comes off the sternum and the clavicle and comes up and has a split tendon coming onto the back of the occiput here and onto the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. So we isolate the muscle by itself, as you can see that muscle is standing out now, and we press down very lightly and that would test the sternocleidomastoid. 